Hi guys, a very good evening everyone. Welcome to the session and welcome once again to the IISC Bangalore previous year questions discussion. Okay, the IISC Bangalore previous year questions discussions. Uh, so, we have already completed the electromagnetic field theory questions for the common portions of electronics and electrical. Okay, yes, that is the electrostats and magnetostats part. Okay, uh, including up to the time varying fields. Okay, but today we are going to talk about the electromagnetic field theory questions which are uh, relevant to the electronics and communication. Just a second. Okay. For the extra uh, syllabus of the electronics and communication that will cover transmission live, transmission lines, rectangular wave guides, wave propagation, antenna, fibers and all those things. Right. So, quickly let us get started. Yeah. Quickly update all your friends that the session is live so that you know we can all get started and uh, get rolling away. Just a moment. Okay, dear. All right, chalo. So the stage is all set. Good evening, dreamer. Let's get moving ahead. This is a regular brief intro about me. Okay, now guys, whatever we discuss today, like all other sessions, okay, with the questions, with the concepts, with the formulas, and with the solutions that whatever we discuss, I'm going to share you the complete PDF in my Telegram group, and also you can get more important uh, concepts, daily dose, doubt discussions and also about the updates about the upcoming examination latest updates about the examination notifications of class and all those things you can join my telegram group here okay now guys the upsc engineering services mains result were also declared and the interviews have also started phase one interviews actually started from 13 september okay it's a long journey and phase two result phase two interview slots are also announced that is from october so if you are one of the uh, aspirant qualified mains and looking for guidance for interview because that is again a very pressure based situation 200 marks of personality test so you can get free mock test interview with our expert panel okay face to face offline interview with a panel okay similar to what you can expect in the upsc uh, examination okay good evening sagnika so you know if you are uh, uh, qualified for mains and looking for free mock interview just share your uh, details in the description the link is in the description and the team will coordinate uh, for booking your slot let's get started with the question a uniform plane wave in free space is normally incident on an infinitely thick dielectric slab okay what is the magnitude of reflection coefficient okay what is the magnitude of reflection coefficient now guys the reflection coefficient is given by the formula Okay, 2008 EC2 two marks question it is. The reflection coefficient is given by the formula. We all know eta 2 minus eta 1 is divided by the eta 2 plus eta 1. We are eta representing the intrinsic impedance of the mediums. Intrinsic impedance of the uh, medium. Okay. Just a moment. Okay. Now, uh, the uniform plane wave is traveling in the free space. Okay, so what is the value of the first medium impedance eta 1 that is eta naught. If you want, we can write it as 120 pi, but I think value will not be required because what is the eta naught? What is the eta naught? It is given by the formula root over mu naught divided by epsilon naught. Now, it is incident on an infinitely thick dielectric slab, okay, whose relative, di whose dielectric constant has been given to you and that is equal to 9. So, what is the intrinsic impedance of the medium? This is again a lossless medium given to you. Okay, lossless dielectric given to you, root over mu by epsilon. Okay, nothing is mentioned about mu and since uh, we can take it as mu naught. Okay, and epsilon will be 9 epsilon naught because relative permittivity is 9. So, epsilon total will be 9 epsilon naught. Okay, and now this is equal to what? 1 upon 9 under root 1 upon 3. But root over mu naught by epsilon naught is eta naught. So, we can directly write this as eta naught. Okay, and hence my value of k would become eta 2 that is equal to 1 by 3 eta naught minus eta naught. Now divided by 1 by 3 eta naught plus eta naught, eta naught is definitely getting cancelled, 1 by 3 minus 1, so minus 2 by 3 is divided by 4 by 3 and hence it is going to be minus half, but we are only looking for the reflection coefficient magnitude, what is modulus of this, so minus half ka modulus is half that is 0 0.5, so my answer to be chosen is option number C. So my answer to be chosen is the option number C, okay, done it, option number C is the correct answer here. Option number C is the correct answer here. Correct? Hai? Yes, Agnika. Yes, Dreamer. Correct answer. Next question. One end of a lossless transmission line. Okay, 2008 question again. One end of a lossless transmission line having the characteristic impedance of 75 ohm 
having the characteristic impedance of 75 ohm for length of 1 cm is short circuited. One end is short circuited. So, you have a transmission line with some given characteristic impedance and one end of it, okay, one end of it is short circuited. That means, let us say the load ZL is equal to 0. That is what short circuit impedance would be. Okay, the impedance of the line is 75 ohms and it is having the length that is total 1 centimeter. It is having the length of 1 centimeter. At this 3 gigahertz, what is the input impedance at the other end? Okay, we need the input impedance and it, it is basically the input impedance of a short circuited section of line which is terminated in short circuit. So, that is also known as ZSC. So, dear, what is the ZSC formula? ZSC, the input impedance of a short circuited lossless line. Okay, short circuited lossless line, it is given by the formula JZ0 tan beta L. Okay, JZ0 tan beta L. So, you have to focus on finding the value of beta first of all. Beta can be calculated as omega by u. Okay, beta can be calculated as omega by u. Frequency vahan se aa jayega. Okay, and length is given. Okay, length is also given. So, let us directly include length also. So, what is the angle beta into L? Beta is omega divided by u and then we will put the value of L. Omega, okay, 2 pi into omega is 2 pi f and f is 3 gigahertz. F is 3 gigahertz. U, of course, this can be taken as air line. By default, nothing is mentioned. So, u can be 3 into 10 power 8 multiplied by the length which is 1 centimeter, 1 into 10 power minus 2. Okay, so this is coming out to be how much? Uh, definitely, 3 is cancelled and we have, okay, 2 pi and here is I got divided by 10 actually. Okay, divide 2 pi 10 power minus 1, 2 pi divided by 10 or pi by 5 and then I can calculate the value of the ZSC that is J Z0, Z0 ka value has 75, J 75 into tan beta L into tan pi by 5. Achha, ab ye dhyan rakhna. Okay, they are not asking the accurate value. So, no need to touch your calculator. They are not asking the actual value. They are asking whether it is 0, resistive, capacitive or inductive. Okay, definitely it is not 0, it is not resistive. Okay, it is j into some tan pi by 5. First quadrant me one. Pi. What is pi by 5? Okay, 32, 36 degree. 36 degree. So, it is in the first quadrant. It is in the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, tan theta will be positive. Okay. So, J, okay, there is only the reactance part with the positive imaginary part, with the positive imaginary part. So, hence it is what? Hence it is inductive. It is like J omega L. Hence it is inductive. For capacitive, eh, the reactance part will be negative, na? 1 upon J omega C. Okay. Okay, so that is why it is inductive. We can tell the nature. Okay, you can calculate the value also, but not required. No need to touch the calculator. It is inductive. Okay. Okay, if it was purely real, it will be resistive. If it is J negative minus J something, it is capacitive. Plus J something, it is inductive. And otherwise, it could be zero as well under certain length conditions. Okay, next question here. Okay, the propagation constant of a lossy transmission line. Okay, lossy transmission line is 2 plus J5 and its characteristic impedance is 50 plus J0 at omega 10 power 6. Okay, so propagation constant and characteristic impedance has been given to you. The propagation constant and characteristic impedance has been given to you. So, update now. What is the propagation constant here? Okay, acha. Deko. Propagation constant gamma is given by 2 plus J5. And we know that we can straight away compare it with alpha plus J beta. And hence, we know what is alpha beta. And Z0 is given to you as 50 plus J0. That is simply 50. The Z0 of the line is real actually. Okay, the impedance of the line is basically real. The Z0 of the line is real. Now, whenever the characteristic impedance of the line is real, it can be lossless or distortionless. Only two possibilities are there. It can be lossless or distortionless. But it cannot be lossless because alpha is non-zero. Okay, because alpha is non-zero. So, Z0 is real and alpha is equal to 2. That means any non-zero alpha. So, it can be the case of distortionless. Z0 equal to real and even alpha equal to 0, it will become the lossless line directly. It will become the lossless line. Okay. Now, for the distortionless line. Okay. For the distortionless line, what is the formula for alpha you can use? Alpha can be taken as root over Rg and beta can be taken as omega root over Lc. Z0 can be taken as root over L by C or that is root over R by G. 
that is root over r by g. Both the formulas can be taken here because distortionless line ka condition nahi hota hai. A line is distortionless. Okay, if r by l, one of the condition of distortionless, r by l is equal to the g by c. Okay, that is why we can have the two formulas of the characteristic impedance. Okay, we can have the two formulas for what? For the characteristic impedance. Theek hai ji? So, I have placed them. Now, alpha ka value 2 hai. Alpha is equal to root over r by g and that is equal to 2. And also let us use, sorry, alpha is root over rg that is equal to 2 and z0 ka second formula agar use kare, that is root over r by g and that is equal to 50. So if I multiply alpha into z0, okay, gg will get cancelled, root r into root r is r and r is equal to how much? Multiply the values also and that is equal to 100. So the value of r is obtained that is equal to the 100 ohms. Ohms per meter, all these parameters are, all these uh, line parameters are per unit length. Achha ji. Also at the same time when you divide them, okay, alpha divide by z0, okay, so when you divide r and r will cancel, g upon 1 by g will become g, root be cancel ho jayega. so that is equal to g and that is 2 by 50, that is equal to 2 by 50. So ye kitna ho jayega? this should be equal to 2 by 50, you wanna? correct. So that is 0 0.04 then. So G ka value, the conductance 0 0.04, so Siemens per meter. Now, only based on these two, okay, dekho, not necessary to solve further. You can calculate the value of L and C by beta and Z0, but agar aap options ko dekhoge, okay, first of all, R is calculated as 100. First of all, R is calculated as 100 to B or C. Then G is 0 0.02 or 0 0.04, that is option number B. That is what is the option number B. So, no need to go further. Na? No need to go further. In dono se agar aap nikaloge, R is equal to 100, G is equal to 0 0.04, confirms option number B. That's it. No need to find L and C. No, you can find. Okay, like I have multiplied alpha and Z0, Z0 ka second formula. Similarly, you multiply beta and Z0, omega is anyways given to you, you will get L. Divide beta and Z0, you will get C. But is it required? Not required. Okay, one mark question, is the effort kya maarenge? It was a gate 16, ISC Bangalore, one mark question. Or kya effort maarenge? That's it, not required. Okay, I think not required. So, let's move ahead to the next. Let us move ahead to the next. <coughs> Let us move ahead to the next. Chalte. Next. This is a very good question. This one is a good question by IIC Bangalore for two marks. A microwave circuit consisting of a lossless transmission lines T1 and T2 is shown in the figure. Okay. The plot shows the magnitude of the input reflection coefficient as a function of frequency f. There is a plot also. Okay. The next, next page it is. The plot shows the uh, magnitude of input reflection coefficient as a function of frequency f. The phase velocity of the signal in the line is 2 into 10 power 8. That is given by 2 into 10 power 8. Okay. The microwave circuit. Okay. There are two lossless transmission line. Okay. What is the length of the line T2? Okay. There is a length of the line T2. Input reflection coefficient given. Hai. And for reflection coefficient, eventually we need the etas. We need the uh, uh, impedance. We need the impedance. So, let us try calculating the impedances here. First of all, guys, the second transmission line whose length is unknown, okay, it is terminated in open circuit. Okay, it is terminated what? It is terminated in open circuit. Okay, so what is the open circuited line formula? Okay, so here let me first calculate the input impedance at this point and that is known as the input impedance of an open circuited section of line ZOC. And what is the formula for the ZOC? The formula for ZOC is given by Z0 is divided by J tan beta L. Like for short circuited line, it is JZ0 tan beta L. For open circuited, it is Z0 by J tan beta L. Okay. Z0 by J tan beta L, where L is unknown. Okay. L is capital S, length of the line. That is unknown. Okay. That is unknown. Okay. So let it be like this only. Z0 ka value mujhe pata hai. But at the same time, but at the same time, what is the impedance seen here? What is the total impedance seen here? Okay, let me say that will become the load impedance to the line 1. I will call this as ZL. Okay, because this is where the line 1 is terminated. This is where the line 1 is terminated. So, what is this ZL? This can be the parallel combination of, this is the parallel combination of 50 along with whatever you have calculated. Okay, so it is equal to 50 parallel with the ZOC. 50 parallel with this impedance. Okay, parallel picture bane na? Okay. They are connected by the, the voltage difference is same. V minus 0 and V minus 0. Okay, let us say this is some voltage V. Okay. 
अच्छा जी ओके सो दिस जेड एल इज फिफ्टी पैरल जे ओ सी ओके नाउ वॉट इज द लोड रिफ्लेक्शन को इफिशियंट फॉर टी वन लेट एस कम टू द ट्रांसमिशन लाइन टी वन ओके वॉट इज द लोड रिफ्लेक्शन को इफिशियंट फॉर्मूला के एल दैट इज द रिफ्लेक्शन को इफिशियंट एट द लोड साइड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिफ्लेक्शन को इफिशियंट एट द लोड साइड इज गिवन बाई द फॉर्मूला जेड एल माइनस जेड नॉट इज डिवाइडेड बाई वॉट इज डिवाइडेड बाई जेड एल प्लस जेड नॉट जेड एल माइनस जेड नॉट इज डिवाइडेड बाई जेड एल प्लस जेड नॉट ठीक है अच्छा अभी हम इसको इतना ही रखते हैं ओके नाउ वॉट इज द रिफ्लेक्शन को इफिशियंट एट इनपुट साइड ओके एट इनपुट साइड एट इनपुट साइड रिफ्लेक्शन को इफिशियंट के और इन द क्वेश्चन दे हैव मैंशन इट एज टाउ ओके के और टाउ दैट इज गिवेन बाय दैट इज गिवेन बाय वॉट फॉर्मूला ओके गुड इवनिंग आई मीन ओके इट इज गिवेन बाय द फॉर्मूला के एल इन टू ई रेज टू दी पावर e raised to the power minus j lossless line hai na okay actually we write e raised to the power minus 2 gamma into length of the line and gamma ki jagah j beta rakhte hue to e power minus 2 j beta into length of the transmission line suppose l1 okay length of the transmission line l1 length of the transmission line l1 okay chalo for the length of the transmission line l1 that is known to me but ओके बट अब आप देखोगे व्हाट इज द इनपुट रिफ्लेक्शन कोफिशियंट अ ग्राफ ऑफ इट इज गिवन फॉर मल्टीपल फ्रीक्वेंसीज ओके द ग्राफ ऑफ इट इज गिवन फॉर मल्टीपल फ्रीक्वेंसीज बट फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर ग्राफ आई एम एबल टू ऑब्जर्व दैट एट द फ्रीक्वेंसी सपोज 1 गीगाहर्ट्ज या 2 गीगाहर्ट्ज ऑल द फ्रीक्वेंसी आर इन गीगाहर्ट्ज और मे बी 0 गीगाहर्ट्ज ओके एट द फ्रीक्वेंसी ओके 0 और 1 और 2 और 3 दैट इज इन गीगाहर्ट्ज ऑफ कोर्स Okay, at gigahertz, of course, or I can say the frequency is n gigahertz. All are integers only, na? At frequency n gigahertz, this value, this input reflection coefficient has been given to as zero. Now, if k is zero, right? If this k is zero, definitely k l will be zero. Definitely k l will be zero. So this also means k l equal to zero. Now, dear, यहाँ पे देख लेंगे how the k l can be zero. How the KL can be zero? So make the numerator equal to zero. So that is only possible if ZL is equal to Z naught. Make the numerator equal to zero. So ZL equal to Z naught. Okay. Now what is the ZL? What is the ZL? That is fifty. Okay. That is fifty. I need ZL parallel. Z, sorry. I need ZL equal to the Z naught. Okay. Equal to the Z naught, but Z naught ka value है fifty. अच्छा. What is ZL? 50 पैरेलल जेड ओ सी अभी ये फॉर्मूला देखिए ना व्हाट इज जेड एल फिफ्टी पैरल जेड ओसी दैट इज इक्वल टू 50 ओके नाउ इंपिडेंस पैरेलल विद अनदर इंपिडेंस इज इक्वल टू वेल 50 पैरेलल विद अनदर इंपिडेंस इज 50 सो दैट अनदर इंपिडेंस हैज टू बी ओपन सर्किट ना दैट हैज टू बी ओपन सर्किट ओके बेसिक नेटवर्क का फंड अप्लाई करेंगे दैट हैज टू बी ओपन सर्किट तो जेड एज जेड ओसी इज इनफाइनाइट ओपन सर्किट इंपिडेंस मींस इनफाइनाइट इंपिडेंस So what is the value of the ZOC? That is infinite. Now what is the formula for ZOC? वो भी derive किया हुआ है. Z not by J tan beta L. Z not upon J tan beta L is equal to infinity. That is only possible. Step by step सब कुछ आ रहा है. That is only possible if denominator tends to zero. One upon zero का case बनेगा so that it can be infinity. So tan beta L equal to infinity. Sorry, tan beta L equal to zero. Tan beta L can be zero if beta into l like tan 0 not only tan 0 tan pi tan 2 pi all this is zero so tan theta is zero theta will be n pi okay theta will be equal to what n pi so beta into l is n pi okay beta into l is n pi okay theek hai we have beta into l is equal to n pi acha what is the value of beta omega by u okay into l is equal to n pi omega by u into l is equal to n pi acha omega is 2 pi f Okay, then divide by u into l is equal to n pi. Okay, now what is the frequency at which this is happening? All this is happening at the frequency of n gigahertz. Okay, all this activity is happening at the frequency equal to n gigahertz. Okay, so now what you can do is, what you can do is, you can put down the frequency which is equal to n, where n is also an integer, and n pi may n is also an integer, so n or n be cancel हो जाएगा. Okay, at n gigahertz. Okay, the frequency is n gigahertz. So we have two pi into n gigahertz. के लिए ten power nine divided by u. Signal velocity on the transmission line is given to you two into ten power eight. 
that is given to me as 2 into 10 power 8 to 2 into 10 power 8 multiply by length which is required desired that is equal to n pi to n pi sub cancel hua 2 cancel hua okay 2 bhi cancel hua we want the value of the length l n pi cancel 2 cancel okay 10 power 8 upon 10 power 9 that is 1 by 10 0 0.1 meter the length of the transmission line very good question asked by IAC Bangalore in 2016 and the length of the transmission line is 0 0.1 meter the length of the transmission line is 0 0.1 meter my final answer okay let me put it here yeah the length of the transmission line the T2 length is 0 0.1 meter any doubt you can ask me the good question it's a good question done let's move ahead to the next then done all right so let us go ahead to the next question huh, next question 2016 again IC Bangalore 2 marks based on what this one is based on okay the lossless micro strip transmission line now usually uh, you know very rare topic uh, in gate but yeah, ISC Bangalore touched it okay the micro strip transmission line but a very fundamental question the basic formula question okay a microwave transmission line consists of a trace of width w it is drawn over a practically infinite ground plane and it is separated by a dielectric okay slab of thickness t and relative permittivity epsilon r greater than one okay the inductance per unit length and the inductance per unit length and the characteristic impedance of this line are l and z naught okay Okay, which one of the following inequalities is correct so what is the basic formula for z naught na okay dekho. for any lossless line it is root over l by c that we anyways know for any lossless line whether it is micro strip line or something the z naught is root over l by c okay and then by this dielectric arrangement we find the value of the capacitance we find the value of the capacitance and we get this formula as root over lt divided by epsilon effective w okay lt divided by epsilon effective w okay now that's what when you study micro strip transmission line you come to know about this epsilon effective parameter this epsilon effective parameter is generally less than the epsilon it is generally less than the epsilon okay it is generally less than the overall epsilon okay yeah we can say that epsilon effective is less than epsilon r epsilon naught it is less than epsilon r epsilon naught okay now if you are able to see that okay one side of the formula you have epsilon r epsilon naught so, dekho. okay there are two quantities i will place one quantity as z naught what is z naught root over lt divided by epsilon effective into w another quantity let us only write it as lt divided by rather than epsilon effective let me write epsilon r epsilon naught w okay but mirko ye pata hai that epsilon effective the denominator is greater the denominator is less than epsilon r epsilon naught okay whosoever denominator is less whosoever denominator is less the overall quantity will be more overall quantity will be more so one will be greater than two one will be greater than two that means z naught will be greater option number a should be correct z naught will be greater than the root over lt divided by epsilon root divided by epsilon r epsilon not w okay so if required see i can't uh, go on and derive this and it will otherwise we will not able to complete all questions of iac bangalore okay so once we go and derive we can understand what is epsilon effective so if required i will plan a separate complete session on micro strip transmission line a complete separate session on micro strip transmission line so that your fundas get cleared over it So, this is what it is option number is z not greater than root over lt divided by epsilon r epsilon not w done okay Chalo. moving ahead to the next question here all right guys so like you are practicing question in this session that is iac bangalore previous year questions okay sometimes we are taking up the engineering services previous year questions other than that several practice sessions live as well as recorded are available on the byju's exam prep app you can participate in that moreover there are practice quizzes not class i'm talking about practice quizzes 
daily practice quizzes. Choose a topic of your own interest and make a habit that daily you can solve at least one quiz. Maybe when you wake up, maybe when you are going to sleep. Okay, so that you know, uh, you compete among several thousands of students participating on the quiz in the app. Okay, so you know for more more practice quizzes and classes you can download the Baiju's exam prep app which is on the Google Play Store and also link is in the description. You can also download the app through the link which is in the description of this video. Right guys, so moving ahead to the next case. Moving ahead to the next case. Okay, ji. Let me first jump to some antenna questions here. Let me first jump to some antenna questions here. For a Hertz dipole antenna, the half power beam width in the E plane is, okay, the HPBW for a Hertz antenna, 90 degree. For a Hertz antenna, 90 degree. You must remember this, na? HPBW, HPBW. Good evening, Manasvi. Okay. I'm good, Mahapatra. I am good, Ratna Mahapatra. How are you? Good evening. Chalo, aajate hain. HPBW is 90 degree. Okay, this is a very simple, this has a very simple derivation. But right now you can note down the value. Okay, for Hertz it is 90 degree. If I ask you for lambda by 2 dipole, if it was lambda by 2 dipole, then the HPBW is given by the 78 degree. Then that is given by what? Then that is given by the 78 degree. That is given by what? 78 degree. Next question. At 20 gigahertz, the gain of a parabolic dish antenna, the gain of a parabolic dish antenna of 1 meter diameter and 70% efficiency. Okay. In all such cases, first we will define the GD. Okay. Okay. In these cases, first we will define the GD. That is the directive gain and directive gain. Yeah, you can start with the affective area, whatever. Affective area can be taken as lambda square by 4 pi into GD. Where AE is the affective area, GD is known as the directive gain. Okay, AE is the affective area of the antenna. Okay, GD is known as the directive gain. GD is known as directive gain. Okay, now because it's a parabolic dish antenna, what is the affective area you take? Okay, you take it as pi r square. Okay, diameter given it, so r is d by 2, so it can be written as pi d square by 4. Okay, pi d square by 4, done it. So, here we will start. Karenge. So, what can be the gd then? If I reverse the formula, gd is going to become 4 pi by lambda square into the affective area. Put down the values. Lambda, achha nahi. frequency given. Hai. So, what is the lambda? Lambda is given by c by f. Okay, that is 3 into 10 power 8 divided by the frequency of 20 gigahertz, 20 into 10 power 9. This is going to be how much? Let me calculate the numbers. Just a second. Anji. Let me calculate the numbers. 0 0.015. So, this is turning out to be 0 0.015. Okay. So, this is 4 pi is divided by 0 0.015 ka whole square into the affective area, which is pi d square by 4, which is pi into d square. d ka value 1 hai. Okay, so what is the overall GD after solving all the parts? I should be getting 4 ko cancel karein. This is by square. Okay, so this is turning out to be 43864. 864.43864.9 approximately. Okay, but now gain would normally mean the power gain. Gain would normally mean the power gain. Okay would mean the power gain so okay so now efficiency is also given efficiency is defined by gp divided by gp gd so what is the power gain or the gain it is eta into gd efficiency is 70 percent so that is 0 0.7 in absolute terms into this value 43864 43864.9 okay and that is eventually going to turn up to be how much Okay, 30705, approximately 30705, okay, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, okay, so, okay, options are in decibel, okay, so when you take the 10 log, because these are power gains, so you can take it as 10 log, when you take the 10 log of this value, the answer that is going to turn up is 44.87 decibel. 
44.87 decibel. 44.87. That is 45 nearly. That is 45 nearly. That is 45 nearly. Okay. That is known as the 45 nearly. No, no, dreamer. See, it is actually the effective uh, permittivity that that will define, and that is less than epsilon or epsilon naught. In some places, it is mentioned greater than that. No. Okay. The uh, if I talk about the relative effective permittivity, let's say like this, dreamer. If I talk about the relative effective permittivity, that is always in the range of one less than epsilon r effective, less than epsilon r. Okay. That is less than epsilon r. Okay, that is actually followed. Okay, that is actually followed. That is why, uh, you know, the option that we chose is correct. In some places, it is given reverse. So, that is why I am correcting you, Dreamer. Chaliye, so, it is the option number D. Okay, it is the option number D here. Moving ahead to the next question, what do I have? Yeah, this is again a good question. So, there were definitely good questions in EMFT in ISC Bangalore, I can say. Okay, the far zone power density radiated by a helical antenna is approximated as Okay, that W rad and W average, it's a power density given to you basically, As clearly mentioned, it is the far zone power density, okay, W average or you can call it as regular what we call it as P average, the time average power density, okay, the, that is the pointing vector, okay, that is the pointing vector, okay, a radiated by a helical antenna is given to you, okay, the radiated power density is symmetrical with respect to phi and exists only in the upper hemisphere, upper hemisphere that is why theta is 0 say pi by 2 and phi is 0 to 2 pi of course to complete the uh, complete azimuthal angle c naught is some constant the power radiated by the antenna and maximum directivity see this word is not 100 percent appropriate directivity means maximum only directivity is maximum directive gain so they can write it as maximum directive gain so whatever but we understand what to calculate we understand what to calculate. So, how do you calculate the power radiated by the antenna? The first part, okay, that is the power radiated by the antenna. Usko target karte. Okay, the power radiated by the antenna is the surface integral of power density. It is the surface integral of the power density, p average dot ds. Okay, p average has been given to you. That is, of course, for antenna, it is in the radial direction. Okay, so we will put this as kya hai? c naught by r square c naught by r square cos raised to the power 4 theta okay ar direction so in the radial direction in the radial direction what is the ds okay in the radial direction ds is given by r square sin theta d theta d phi ar in the radial direction it is r square sin theta d theta d phi ar so that ar ar will be 1 okay ar dot ar 1 ho jayega r square cancel ho jayega R square cancel ho jayega. Okay, so the power radiated would be given by the power radiated would be given by R square ko cancel karte huye. Okay, C naught is a constant and it is d theta d phi. I can put it as double integral C naught constant and then I am left with double integral of cos power 4 theta sin theta d theta d phi. Both are theta functions. Okay, R square cancel. Now you have a choice here. Now you have a choice here. Okay, you can go by, you can solve it by Wally's integral. Those who are no Wally's integral, so then for them it is a few seconds job. Okay, or you can solve it by substitution also. Substitution not always will be perfect, but here substitution is going to be simple. At least here substitution is going to be simple. What type of substitution can be used? Nothing. Cos theta ko rakh dije t. So, whenever you differentiate cos theta, it will be minus sin theta. So, minus sin theta d theta will become dt. Okay, so sin theta d theta ko dt minus dt rakh denge and this will be substituted as t power 4. So, what is going to be the radiated power by the antenna? The power radiated by the antenna c naught is going to be now looking as it's now going to be now looking as d phi ko separate kar dete hai actually so cos power 4 theta that is t okay t power 4 sin theta d theta is minus dt this is minus dt so t power 4 minus dt and then d phi d phi ka integral separate kar dete let us put this as separately actually okay integral d phi separate 
phi is 0 say 2 pi now what is the limit for t okay what is the limit for t theta ka limit kya hai okay theta ka limit kya hai theta is 0 say pi by 2 phi is 0 say pi 0 say 2 pi okay so theta 0 cos 0 is equal to what cos 0 is equal to 1 okay theta upper limit pi by 2 okay upper limit pi by 2 tak hai na cos pi by 2 is 0 so upper limit will be 0 okay upper limit will be 0 so now what you can do is you can take out the minus yeah you can use the minus to swap the limits actually so t power 4 ka integral t power 5 by 5 limit 0 say 1 minus ki vese limit swap ka diya d phi integral is phi okay phi upper minus lower limit 2 pi minus 0 will be 2 pi so now i have the answer the power radiated by the antenna 2 pi yaha pe ho jayega 1 upper limit 1 lower limit 0 so that is just 1 only so 2 pi is divided by 5 into c naught 2 pi by 5 c naught or if you want to calculate the value of this that is 1 point 1.25 c naught approximately that is the power radiated but i need one more thing maximum directivity or let's say maximum directive gain ab directive gain kaise nikalenge next i want to calculate the directive gain gd as we all know is a directive gain that is given by that is given by the radiation intensity of the antenna divided by the average radiation intensity the radiation intensity of an antenna is given by r square p average radiation intensity of the antenna is given by r square p average and the average radiation intensity is the p rad upon 4 pi so hence we can have the final formula of directive gain that is known as 4 pi r square p average 4 pi r square p average is divided by p rad the 4 pi r square p average is divided by what is divided by the p rad okay is divided by p rad now ye kitna ho gaya this is equal to 4 pi r square p average what is the p average that is the function given to you c naught divided by r square cos power 4 theta now we have the radiated power which is calculated put down the value what is the radiated power 2 pi by 5 c naught okay to ye aa gaya 2 pi by 5 c naught okay so r square r square cancelled c naught cancelled what is the final value of the gd coming up ye ho jayega 2 4 pi 2 pi 2 well, to multiplied by 5 that is 10 cos power 4 theta a very important part solved so what is the gd that is 10 cos power 4 theta so what is the directivity of the antenna then directivity is known as the maximum directive gain and maximum directive gain is 10 into maximum value of cos power 4 theta cos theta maximum is 1 okay so this is going to be cos power 4 theta also 1 so final answer is just equal to the what it is 10 it is equal to 10 very good question again okay although on fundamental formula but students lag behind in such questions so it is what Achha, decibel mein chahiye finally so 10 okay in decibel also it's going to be 10 only na koi bahut bada effort to hai nahi mm -hmm. yeah right so that is also equal to 10 log of 10 but log 10 to just like 1 na so answer is 10 decibel answer is 10 decibel okay and the radiated power was 1.25 c naught Okay, the 1.256 C naught, 10 decibel, option number B, totally correct here. The option number B is totally correct here. Option number B is the totally correct option here. Okay, now let us move ahead towards the next question coming up here. Two lossless X-band horn antennas are separated by a distance of 200 lambda. The amplitude reflection coefficients at the terminals of transmitting and receiving antennas are 0.15 and 0.18 respectively. Okay, the maximum directivities of the transmitting and receiving antennas are 18 and 22 decibels respectively. Assuming that the input power in the lossless transmission line connected to the antenna is 2 watt and that the antennas are perfectly aligned and polarization matched, what is the power delivered to the load at the receiver? What is the power delivered to the load at the receiving end? okay just one second
Yes, dear. Okay. So let us continue forward. Hello, hello. Let me just test the voice again. Yes, dear. Okay. So let us continue forward. Yeah, all cool. Right. So two lossless X band antenna are separated by a distance of 200 lambda. The amplitude reflection coefficient at the terminals of transmitting and receiving end are given to you. Okay. The maximum directivities of the transmitting and receiving antenna are given to you. Okay. Assuming that the input power in the lossless transmission line connected to the antenna. Okay. Let us start. Okay. So input power in the lossless transmission line connected to the antenna. Okay. Let's say this is one of the uh, let's say this is one of the antennas okay just to explain you i'm just taking the diagram like a dipole case okay just to explain you the input power that is fed is to what Okay, the input power that is fed is to what? Okay, uh, input power in the lossless transmission and connected to the antenna. Okay, so or you can take a regular picture as well, no issues. Okay, let's say this is the input side antenna. Okay, and it is transmitting a power of 2 watt and there will be some receiving antenna. Although they are separated by... Although they are separated by a total distance of 2 100 lambda they are separated by what the distance of 200 lambda correct they are separated by a distance of 200 lambda now kya bola hai? Uh, the amplitude reflection coefficient uh, at the terminal of the transmitting and receiving antenna 0.15 and 0.18 okay so yahan pe jo reflection coefficient at the input side is 0.15 so what is the power that is being radiated by the antenna what should be the power that is being radiated by the antenna okay the power radiated by this antenna you can just say this antenna is like the load to the transmission line this antenna is like the load to the transmission line okay no no exam why draw it okay just for explanation i am drawing you now uh, this uh, antenna is like the load to the transmission line and what is the power what is the p load it is given by 1 minus mod k square it is given by 1 minus mod k square so at the input side it is 0 0.15 to 1 minus 0 0.15 square into the input power right into the input power correct so that can be how much what is the value of the input power the input power is 2 okay so what is this answer and that is given by okay 1.955 okay then what is the power received by the receiving antenna okay what is the power received by the receiving antenna wo figure out karna hai aapko. okay what is the power received by the receiving antenna so what is the power received by the receiving antenna dear okay what is the power received Yeah, sorry. So we are calculating the power received by the receiving antenna. By what equation? Okay, two antennas are separated and they are in the far field and they are separated by a distance of 200 lambda. The power received by the antenna, you will be calculating it as lambda by 4 pi r whole square GDR into GDT into GDR, yeah, whatever. GDT into GDR into power transmitted by the antenna. What is this equation? This is nothing but what you commonly know as the Frisch transmission equation. Okay, this is calculated by the Frisch transmission equation. This has been calculated by the Frisch transmission equation. So, what is the power received? Okay, so lambda nikalna padega. Chalo, we can put it in terms of lambda only. But what is GDR and GDT? The directivities of transmitting and receiving antenna, they are given in decibel. Okay, so 10 log of GDT, 
that is given to you in decibel what is the value of gdt okay 1.8 by uh, 18 by 10 1.8 and then you will take 10 10 raised to the power 1.8 acha similarly the decibel may value given hai for gdr 10 log gdr is 22 so after solving what is the value of gdr it is 10 power 22 by 10 which is 2.2 so i can write down these values separately there i can write down these values separately this is 158.5 second wala 158.5 and the first one is given by the first one is given by 63.1 or approximately 63 likh lete fine okay so i'll put down these values here lambda divided by 4 pi r r is in terms of lambda so that is why lambda not required here into the gdt what is the gdt 63 and another one is 150 <coughs> excuse me 158.5 158.5 into the power transmitted and that is nothing but 1.955 1.955 okay so what is the power received here what is the power received here and then this is perfect okay so this is turning out to be 3.09 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 watts or let me put it as approximately 3.1 but milliwatts 3.1 but what milliwatts 3.1 milliwatts okay chalo now what is the power delivered to the load at the receiving end what we need is the power at the load okay how much power is received by the load so finally coming to the power received at the load that will be 1 minus mod k square into the power <coughs> coming to this antenna so that is going to be 1 minus mod k square what is the reflection coefficient at the receiving end 0 0.18 1 minus 0 0.18 square into 3.1 milliwatt k form may so how much is this answer then so this is 2.999999 approximately 3 milliwatt approximately you can put this answer as 3 milliwatt okay approximately 3 milliwatt yes dreamer so the final answer to be entered here is okay the power to be uh, the power delivered to the load at receiver in milliwatt is 3 approximately 3 is a approximately 3 is the answer okay approximately 3 is the answer okay moving ahead to the next question okay the electric field of a uniform plane wave traveling along negative z direction is given to you okay electric field along the negative z direction that is why it is a function of e power plus j beta z okay it is given to you this wave is incident upon the receiving antenna placed at the origin and whose radiated electric field towards the incident wave is given by the following equation okay given by the following equation ax plus 2 ay el 1 by r e power minus jkr the polarization of the incident wave the polarization of the antenna fundamentally it's on polarization okay and the losses due to polarization the losses due to polarization mismatch are the losses due to polarization mismatch are okay right polarization mismatch are to wo kitna hoga so have a look into this what is the incident electric field what is the incident Achha, these are four options okay what is the incident electric field let me write down this case here it is given by ax plus j a y e naught this is given by ax plus j a y e naught e raised to the power j k z e raised to the power j k z now okay e raised to the power j k z now what is the direction of propagation e power plus jkz the wave is traveling in the minus z direction that is already mentioned in the language also the wave is traveling in minus z direction okay the simple way of finding okay whether it is uh, circular to hoga why it is circular why it is circular because what is the phase difference okay this is j and what is the value of j j means e power j 90 degree okay so phi the theta the phase difference between them is 90 degree okay definitely it hints that and amplitudes are also equal 
वन मोर थिंग आई शुड राइट डाउन द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ एक्स कॉम्पोनेंट एंड द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ वाई दोनों का एम्पलीट्यूड ई नॉट है बिकॉज द एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ जे इज वन मॉडल ऑफ जे इज वन ओके सो वॉट आई कैन से मॉडल ऑफ ई एक्स विल बी इक्वल टू द मॉडल ऑफ ई वाई सो बोथ दिस कंडीशन इज हिंटिंग दैट इट इज टूवर्ड्स सर्क्यूलर ओनली ओके बट नाउ इफ आई अप्लाई द शॉर्टकट गाइज यू कैन वॉच माई वीडियोज ऑन दिस okay if you want to get the shortcuts about polarization and techniques lag cross lead okay so out of the two components there is the phase difference of 90 degree okay but who is lagging x because this y component has the additional phase of 90 degree so what is the lagging component x what is the leading component y able to see in the y component there is a 90 degree plus 90 degree phase difference so let us do lag cross lead and ax cross ay we all know basic uh, cross product rules x cross y is z okay x cross y is z okay but but the dop is minus z so i can say that lag cross lead is minus dop dear whenever lag cross lead is minus dop okay whenever lag cross lead is minus dop it is known as the rcp right handed circular polarization right handed circular polarization right handed circular polarization it is known as the right handed circular polarization ठीक है जी इट इज नोन एज द राइट हैंडेड सर्कुलर पोलराइजेशन ठीक है नाउ नाउ व्हाट इज द नेक्स्ट पैरामीटर गिवन टू यू द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड दैट इज रेडिएटेड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड बाय द एंटेना ओके दैट इज ई ए इसको अगर लिख ले तो नेक्स्ट लेट मी राइट डाउन ई ए एंड दैट इज गिवन बाय That is given by AX plus two AY into EL. AX plus two AY, right into EL. E raised to the power minus JKR. But here, what is the phase difference? But here, what is the phase difference? AX and two AY. This is one and this is two. Both are real numbers. That means they have zero phase difference. But two is just two. Okay, the phase difference between them is zero. And because the phase difference between them is zero. it is the case of linear polarization lp okay whenever the phase difference between them is zero or 2n pi it is the linear polarization okay so we know the polarization of the incident wave we know the polarization of the antenna now okay they are definitely mismatched one is circular one is linear and due to the polarization mismatch there will be losses that we need to find out okay that we need to find out That we need to what? That we need to find out. तो उसको निकालेंगे. Decibel में भी convert कर लेंगे. But to find out that we need one more information here. We need one for one more information here. That for the incident wave, what is the polarization vector? Okay. We define the polarization vector as P I suppose. Okay. We define the polarization vector as P I, and that is given by A X plus J A Y. ओके यूनिट वेक्टर यूनिट वेक्टर करस्पॉन्डिंग टू इट तो ए एक्स प्लस जे ए वाई डिवाइडेड बाय हाउ मच अंडर रूट ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर कॉम्पोनेंट इसका मैग्नीट्यूड वन इसका मैग्नीट्यूड वन तो वन प्लस वन विल बी टू ओके मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ दिस डोंट टेक जे मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ जे विल बी वन ओके सो दिस इज द पोलराइजेशन वैक्टर करस्पॉन्डिंग टू द इंसिडेंट वेव सिमिलरली वॉट इज द पोलराइजेशन वैक्टर फॉर दिस फॉर करस्पॉन्डिंग टू ई ए let me say the polarization vector is pa and that is ax plus 2ay but converted into unit vector form ax plus ay divided by magnitude vector divided by the magnitude will give the unit vector so under root of 1 square plus 2 square that will be 5 that will be 5 okay okay definitely polarization is mismatched and definitely the polarization is mismatched definitely the polarization is mismatched okay Okay, polarization is mismatch, and what is the losses due to this mismatch? The losses due to this mismatch is given by modulus of pi polarization vector of the incident wave. Okay, polarization vector due to the antenna. Okay, dot product whole square. Okay, this is pi hat and this is pa hat unit vector, right? We call this as pa hat. ठीक है सो लेट अस जस्ट पुट डाउन दीज वैल्यूज ओके सो मॉडल पहले पी आई का वैल्यू रखेंगे ए एक्स प्लस जे ए वाई 
that is ax plus jay divided by root 2 then you take ax plus 2 ay divided by root 5 is modulus take it and square karenge dot product x to x component multiplied y to y component multiplied that is 2j divided by root 2 root 10 root 5 will become root 10 and then is ka square karna hai okay so this is going to be under root 1 square plus 2 square but square and under root cancel karte hai, that is going to be 5 and under root 10 ka square will be 10 so this is equal to half this is equal to half in the absolute terms okay in the absolute terms it is just half okay so what is its value okay what is going to be its value in the okay so this half okay when converted to the decibel form okay this converted to the decibel form we know decibel form a 10 log half lenge and 10 log half you will calculate that will going to be minus 3 db that is going to be minus 3 db that is going to be what that is a minus 3 db okay so minus 3 db to hai Okay, this is linear, this is circular, but clockwise or anti-clockwise, there was an ambiguity with the options. This question was challenged by the students and the challenge was okay, accepted by the ISC Bangalore. See, circular or anti-clockwise or anti-clockwise, it depends what is the direction from which you are looking. Maybe you are observing from the other side or the other side, it can become clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay, that is why we don't define this polarization in terms of clockwise, anti-clockwise. We define in terms of right-handed and left-handed circular polarization. Okay, so both C and D stands to be correct. Clockwise and anti-clockwise can vary based on the, uh, the point of observation, right? So both C and D correct. Okay, the very correct answer is actually RCP, they should clearly mention right-handed circular polarization. Okay, then linear and minus 3 db these are the parameters that should be the actual correct answer okay rcp then linear and then minus 3 decibel and then what minus 3 decibel Achha, polarization related questions were also discussed now this is not an antenna this is a polarization result if a rcp wave if a rcp polarized wave is incident normally on a plane perfect conductor then the reflected wave okay then the reflected wave Whenever a RCP wave is incident, then the reflected wave, be it perfect conductor or not, whenever a RCP wave is incident, the reflected wave is always LCP and vice versa. These are standard proofs. Once you study the reflections and mix it with the polarization of the waves, this is a standard result. RCP incident hoga to LCP reflect hoga. LCP incident hoga to RCP reflect hoga. Okay. RCP reflect hoga. Right. For any value of reflection coefficient, be it positive or negative. Okay, be it positive or negative. Okay, ultimately the DOP of the wave will change. Okay, for incident and reflected, and that is why there is a change in the nature of the polarization. Okay, okay. So if RCP is incident, LCP is reflected. If LCP incident, RCP is reflected, and vice versa. Okay. Next question. One more question. 2016 only re somehow related with polarization, but not only on polarization. Let the electric field of a plane electromagnetic wave propagating in a homogeneous medium be expressed as E equal to x ex e power minus j omega t minus beta z where the propagation constant beta is a function of the angular velocity angular frequency omega. Assume that beta and ex are known and are real from the information available which of the following cannot be determined. Okay, can you determine the type of polarization? Electric field has only one component. Electric field having a single component is always linear polarized. Okay, electric field having a singular component is always linear polarized, that is LP. So, we can determine what is the polarization. Can you determine group velocity? Can you determine phase velocity? How do you calculate phase velocity? Okay, you can calculate this as beta by omega. Oh, sorry. You can calculate this as omega by beta. Omega by beta. Okay, can you determine the group velocity? Kya bola hai? Beta and EX are known. Okay, and, 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 beta is known, ex is known, beta is a function of this. Uh, let me be clear. From the information available, uh, beta is a function of omega. All right, take it. So, yeah, beta is known to yes, na? color. So, this can be determined. Achha. What about the group velocity? Group velocity ug can be calculated by the formula 1 upon del beta by del omega. So, since beta is given to you, since beta is given to you, which is a function of omega, you can differentiate it with omega. No issues here. Okay. So, that is also possible to be determined. 
ठीक है दैट इज ऑल्सो पॉसिबल टू बी डिटरमाइंड ओके द पावर फ्लक्स थ्रू द जेड इक्वल टू जीरो प्लेन द पावर फ्लक्स नॉट टू कैलकुलेट पावर वी नीड द पावर डेंसिटी टू कैलकुलेट द पावर ओके पावर डिपेंड्स ऑन द पावर डेंसिटी टाइम एवरेज पॉइंटिंग वेक्टर ओके एंड दैट इज गिवेन बाई मॉडी स्क्वायर बाई टू ईटा दिस फर्दर डिपेंड्स ऑन ईटा दिस फर्दर डिपेंड्स ऑन ईटा राइट ईटा इज रूट ओवर म्यू बाय एप्सलिन रूट ओवर म्यू बाय एप्सलिन एंड दैट इंफॉर्मेशन इज मिसिंग ओके इट इज अ होमोजीनियस मीडियम दैट इज ओके बट वेयर इज एप्सलिन वेयर इज मू इट इज नॉट मैंशन दैट इट इज एयर इफ इट वॉज एयर देन that is okay so that is also not mentioned so which of the following cannot be determined it is d the power flux okay through the z equal to 0 plane through the z equal to 0 plane that is that information is not available that information is actually not available okay So P average, even if it turns out, that will be in the z direction. Okay, agreed. ठीक है, yeah. अच्छा, also, uh, even if you uh, try to integrate it, we need no, we we only don't need the P average. So let's say if I mention mu and epsilon also, there is one more catch here. Okay, even if you are suppose me given mu and epsilon, okay, even if you are given mu and epsilon, problem क्या होगा? Okay, when you integrate this p average dot ds, देखो p average आएगा mod e square by two eta, okay into a z, okay unit vector, okay the wave is in the z direction, so ये भी a z आएगा, okay ds also if you take in the z direction, okay it's a z equal to zero plane, so ds can be written as ds a n cap, okay ये a z है, ds a n cap और a n cap भी a z होगा, okay All these things are okay, but what surface area, what area you are integrating through z equal to zero plane? Okay, what area you are integrating? That is also unknown. So hence, d is a parameter. D is the parameter which cannot be determined. Okay, option number d is correct. So this was more like thinking question, more on just uh, basic thinking. Okay, this question was more on the basic thinking. ठीक है? More on the basic thinking. चलते हैं next question की तरफ. In the design of a single mode step index optical fiber, single mode है. In the single mode step index optical fiber close to upper cutoff. Okay, the single mode operation is not preserved if what is happened. Okay, single mode operation is not preserved. The number of modes. Okay, the number of modes is given by. The number of modes is given by the formula that is nothing but v square by two. Where v is given by the formula pi d by lambda into numerical aperture, and this v is known as the mode volume actually. Okay, and for v less than the two point four zero five, okay, single mode operation is ensured. Okay, ये सब just पता होना चाहिए. For one mark, you are not writing all this, but this is what you should know. Okay, single mode operation is ensured for v less than two point four zero five for value greater than this. It's not insured. Okay, now it is already in the single mode. Okay, it will not preserved if. Okay, so if you increase the v, single mode operation will be lost. Okay, single mode operation will be lost. Okay, for if you don't preserve this value of v, the single mode operation will be lost. Okay. Okay, the single mode operation will be lost. One number of modes को बाद में relate करेंगे. It has some different connection also. ओके नाउ व्हाट विल हैपन ओके सिंग अगर वी का वैल्यू बढ़ाएंगे ठीक है राइट वी कैसे बढ़ेगा तो वी इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू डी और प्रोपोर्शनल टू रेडियस आई कैन से एंड वी इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू वेवलेंथ ओके इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू वेवलेंथ ओके सो इफ यू इंक्रीज द डायमीटर और रेडियस वी विल इंक्रीज एट द सेम टाइम इफ यू डिक्रीज द वेव लेंथ देन ऑल्सो वी विल इंक्रीज ठीक है ठीक है सो रेडियस डबल ये है ना रेडियस को डबल किया ऑपरेटिंग वेवलेंथ को हाफ किया सो यू आर डूइंग बोथ द एक्शन एक्चुअली यू आर डूइंग बोथ द एक्शन सो डी इज द वेरी करेक्ट आंसर दिस इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज वी दिस इज वॉट दिस इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द वी मोड वॉल्यूम दैट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द मोड वॉल्यूम क्लियर दैट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द मोड वॉल्यूम ये ध्यान रखना है एकदम ओके राइट 
दोनों को हाफ कर दिया देन देर इज नो चेंज ना इफ यू हाफ दिस ऑल्सो इफ यू हैव दिस ऑल्सो डी बाई टू लैमडा बाई टू तो टू विल कैंसिल इफ यू डबल टू डी एंड टू लैमडा टू ऑल्सो कैंसिल सो ए एंड बी से देर इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी अफेक्ट रेडियस इज हाफ वेव लेंथ इज डबल सो दैट इज इवन गोइंग टू लेसर द वैल्यू ऑफ वी ओके यू हैव दिस एंड यू डबल दिस सो दैट मेक्स द वी वन फोर्थ दैट मेक्स द वी वन फोर्थ ओके बट इफ यू डबल दिस एंड हाफ दिस ओके वन अपॉन हाफ विल बिकम टू तो टू डूज फोर इट इज गोइंग टू मेक द वी फोर टाइम्स एंड इट इज ऑलरेडी क्लोज टू द कट ऑफ अपर कट ऑफ वॉट इज अपर कट ऑफ टू पॉइंट फोर जीरो फाइव इट इज ऑलरेडी क्लोज टू अपर कट ऑफ इट इज ऑलरेडी क्लोज टू द अपर कट ऑफ ये भी बोला था ओके दैट मीन्स वी कैन एज्यूम दैट द मोड वॉल्यूम इज ऑलरेडी नियर टू पॉइंट फोर जीरो फाइव एंड यू आर ट्राइंग टू एम्पलीफाइड बाई फोर सो सिंगल मोड ऑपरेशन विल बी लॉस्ट बाय द ऑप्शन नंबर डी ओके ऑप्शन नंबर डी ये इन टू फोर टाइम्स हो जाएगा ओके वी को चार गुना कर देगा ओके इट्स गोइंग टू मेक इट फोर टाइम्स लाइट फ्रॉम फ्री स्पेस इज इंसिडेंट एट एन एंगल थीटा आई टू द नॉर्मल ऑफ द फेस ऑफ अ स्टेप इंडेक्स लार्ज कोर ऑप्टिकल फाइबर द कोर एंड क्लाइडिंग रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडाइसिस आर एन वन एंड एन टू रिस्पेक्टिवली द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा आई फॉर विच इंसिडेंट लाइन विल बी गाइडेड द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा आई फॉर विच इंसिडेंट लाइन विल बी गाइडेड इन द कोर ऑफ द फाइबर दैट मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा आई इज नोन एज वॉट इज नोन एज द एक्सेप्टेंस एंगल इज नोन एज द एक्सेप्टेंस एंगल थीटा आई ओके इज नोन एज द एक्सेप्टेंस एंगल थीटा ए ओके न्यूमेरिकल अपेरेचर इज गिवन बाय द फॉर्मूला साइन ऑफ थीटा ए अच्छा सो लेट मी एक्चुअली राइट डाउन द फॉर्मूला ओनली सो व्हाट इज दिस एक्सेप्टेंस एंगल थीटा ए इट इज गिवन बाय साइन इनवर्स ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल अपेरेचर एंड न्यूमेरिकल अपेरेचर इज नथिंग बट रूट ओवर ऑफ एन वन स्क्वायर माइनस एन टू स्क्वायर ओके रूट ओवर ऑफ एन वन स्क्वायर माइनस एन टू स्क्वायर सो थीटा ए ओके साइन इनवर्स ऑफ एन वन स्क्वायर माइनस एन टू स्क्वायर अ वेरी फंडामेंटल क्वेश्चन Under root and then taking the sine inverse of this, thirty-two point five eight degrees. That is thirty-two point five eight degrees. That is known as what? Thirty-two point five eight. Thirty-two point five eight degrees. Done, Aji. Correct, Dreamer. It is a thirty-two point five eight degrees. रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स जस्ट नाउ वी कवर्ड रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स सो पासवर्ड फॉर टूडे सेशन इज इंडेक्स द पासवर्ड फॉर टूडे सेशन इज इंडेक्स आई एन डी ई एक्स यू विल गेट द पी डी एफ इन माई टेलीग्राम ग्रुप विद द पासवर्ड प्रोटेक्शन एंड दैट इज नोन एज द इंडेक्स दैट इज नोन एज वॉट इंडेक्स ओके आई विल स्टॉप फॉर टू नाइट ओके सो आई थिंक देर इज जस्ट वन एरिया आई एम नॉट एबल टू टच टूडे अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई शेल स्टॉप नाउ एंड दैट इज द रेक्टेंगुलर वेव गाइड्स क्वेश्चन बट दे वर वेरी इजी नेचर okay so you can deal with very easy formula based questions for there okay so time is nearly done so i'm stopping for uh, this session so only rectangular wave guides just two or three questions were there but that you can deal because all were formula based question all were what all were formula based question rest uh, the others are done rest the others are done and also guys to quickly update you some more important activities yes guys so you know again planning to take a next step towards success in gate okay the byju's national scholarship test is here for you okay appear in this scholarship test and you can get up to 90% scholarship on the gate preparation program this sunday you can appear 17 september starting from 9 am okay also also the coming wednesday that is the next wednesday 20th september all your favorite abhinav negi sir mtech iit delhi more than 11 years of teaching experience okay attend a free mega live interactive workshop where on the byju's exam prep app dhyan rakhna ye youtube pe nahi hai and sir is going to talk about how to get 80 plus marks how to get the 80 plus marks okay with a 75% syllabus coverage we know that we know that there are always some topics in the exam which will carry more weightage and there are some topics which are ऐसा नहीं कि छोड़ देना है बट यू नो यू कैन टेक इट लाइटली या यू कैन यू नो हैव लिटिल प्रैक्टिस ओके बट एटलीस्ट व्हाट आर दो सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट एरिया या सिलेबस विच कैन इंश्योर यू गेट एटी प्लस मार्क्स इफ यू ट्राई टू बी परफेक्ट इन देम एंड हाउ टू गेट दो एटी मार्क्स इन द गेट विद द सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट सिलेबस यू कैन वॉच दिस नेक्स्ट वन एज डे सेवन थर्टी पी एम ओके फ्रॉम माई साइड Okay bye bye good night thank you stay safe and take care of yourself just take care of yourself right okay dear bye bye
yes dreamer sure we'll we'll i'll plan a transmission line marathon type of session soon okay bye bye good night